Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have x cubed plus x squared equals 1 over 8. I'll be presenting two methods, even though I may not complete the first method. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I will try to use the cubic formula. That's a bit painful. So to use the cubic formula, here's what we need. We need to get rid of the x squared because you shouldn't have the uh, x squared term, basically. That's how it works. So let's go ahead and do the following. In our original equation, let's replace x with y minus one third. Now you might be asking, like, where does that minus one third come from? So here's where it comes from. You look at the sine or the coefficient of x squared, which is one in this case, and then you just negate it and divide it by the degree of the polynomial, which is three in this case. So you can also apply this to a quartic, quintic, so on and so forth. There's a cubic formula, there's a quartic formula, which is quite complicated, and unfortunately no quintic formula is available. Okay, so if you go ahead and replace x with one, y minus one third, we're going to get the following, y minus one third cubed plus y minus one third squared equals one over eight. And this is gonna allow us to get rid of the, the radical, well, the quadratic term, I mean, not the radical. In other words, y squared. If you go ahead and expand this, you're going to get the following. Let me go ahead and give you the result y cubed minus 1 over 27 minus y squared plus 1 over 3y plus y squared minus 2 over 3y plus 1 ninth equals 1 over 8. And then notice that we can go ahead and cancel out y squared, that's actually the goal. And then let's go ahead and combine like terms and turn this into a reduced cubic. y cubed minus 1 over 3y equals 3 over 216. If you subtract 1 over 9 from 1 over 8, that's what you get, right? And here, obviously, here's what we would like to do. We would like to simplify this as much as possible. Obviously, not just 1 over 8 minus 1 over 9. We also have to add the 1 over 27. That's how we got that number. Okay, so here's how the cubic formula uh, plays a role in this. So let's go ahead and talk about a well-known identity. If you expand a plus b quantity cubed, you know from binomial theorem you're going to get four terms and the two of the terms in the middle can actually be subtracted from this, right? So minus 3ab times a plus b and then the result is going to be the first and the last terms which are the cubes a cubed plus b cubed. So this is basically the essence of the cubic formula. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace a plus b with y here and here. And then our equation is going to start looking like this, as long as we take care of the coefficients. Make sense? So let's see. This is going to turn into y cubed minus 3ab times y. And then equals a cubed plus b cubed. Right? Okay. Now notice that we have a y cubed here. Coefficient is 1. We have a y here, the coefficient is negative 3ab, and here it's negative one-third. So if you set the coefficients equal, 3ab should be equal to one-third, which means ab is going to be one-ninth. ab is one over nine. And if you look at the constant term here, a cubed plus b cubed, that should equal our constant term, which is three over 16. So that gives us another equation. But guess what? Even though these, this equation or this system looks cubic, it's actually quadratic. We can go ahead and cube both sides, a cubed plus, I mean, times b cubed equals 1 over 729, which is 9 cubed. And then here, a cubed plus b cubed can be, uh, we can isolate b cubed, write it as 3 over 216 minus a cubed. I told you it was, it's a painful method, but it works. So now we can go ahead and substitute b cubed here, and that's going to give us a cubed times b cubed, which is 3 over 216 minus a cubed equals 
1 over 729. Great. <laughs> not so great, but you know, anyways, not too bad. Now we're going to go ahead and use substitution, set a cubed equal to c, and then you're going to get a quadratic equation from here, so on and so forth. And after solving the quadratic, let me tell you what's going to happen. Remember, uh, with the quadratic formula, we get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? And then these are going to be like, this is going to be the a value or the c value, and that's going to equal a cubed. A is just going to be the cube root of one of the solutions, and then the other one is just going to be the cube root of the other solution, so on and so forth. Anyway, this is very painful, right? Let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which is much, much better. Okay. And one caveat, though, the second method doesn't always work nicely, but this is a special type of equation. So here's our original problem. He, x cubed plus x squared equals 1 over 8. And by the way, probably some of you already guessed the answer, and they're like, oh, I can do this in 5 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever at the time. Um, okay, that's, that's fine. You can guess and check. That's totally fine. And once you find one of the solutions, you can kind of do long division or, you know, factoring, whatever, uh, and you can find the other ones. That's basically uh, what we're going to do. And then I'm going to show you a graph at the end. All right. So here's what we're going to do. M multiply both sides by 8. Uh, so our equation looks a little better. No fractions. Put everything on the same side. Great. Now notice that 8x cubed is a perfect cube. So I can write it as 2x cubed. And 8x squared, we can write this as 2x squared, but that gives us 4x squared. So I got to multiply it by 2. Minus 1 equals 0. Now, you probably noticed that I'm going to use substitution here. And I want to set 2x equal to z. We could also do y doesn't matter. So now we're going to get z cubed minus 2z, or not 2z, squared minus 1 equals 0. I mean, this equation would be easy to solve. It was quadratic, but it's cubic, but still easy to solve because it's special. Why is it special? Because, by the way, this is a plus sign. I don't know why I put a minus sign. Okay. So why is it easy to solve? Because if you pay attention to two things, if you ever get a quadratic, not quadratic, I should say. If you ever get a polynomial equation and you're looking for solutions, uh, you can always test uh, the sum of the coefficients. Is it 0? 1 plus 2 minus 1? Nope, it's not 0. But if you can also check the evens and odd, like even and odd powers. For example, these 3 is an odd power, and 2 and 0, these two, is uh, even power. So the sum of these two coefficients is 1, and the coefficient of z cubed is 1. So they're equal. What is that supposed to mean? It means z equals negative 1 is a solution. You could also easily check that by using the rational root theorem because there are only so many divisors, right? Anyways, to keep a long story short, z equals negative 1 is a solution. But remember, z is 2x, so 2x is equal to negative 1. That means x equals negative 1 half is a real solution. And guess what? That is the only real solution. When we look at the graph, you're going to get a better idea. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, or should we find... Okay, how do you find the uh, non-real solutions from here? You can go ahead and manipulate this, like z cubed plus z squared plus z squared minus 1 equals 0. Notice that I wrote to 2z squared as z squared plus z squared. And then these two factor out z squared. And here difference of two squares and now you can take out z plus one and z squared plus z minus one equals zero no real solution z is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared which is one well actually never mind we're going to get real solutions from here what was i thinking okay so we took out z plus one let me make sure i do this correctly okay and then from here we're going to get z equals negative one plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus plus 4. So that's going to be 5, and those are going to be the other solutions. So we should have three solutions, z equals negative 1, and the other two. And notice that we have the golden flavor here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now real quick. And hopefully we'll notice that there are three solutions. Yay! And those solutions are negative 1 half, negative 1 minus root 5 over 4, and 
1 plus root 5 over 4. But by the way, uh, one thing to keep in mind is z is equal to 2x, so we have to take half of these as solutions. That's why we get a 4 at the bottom. That's why we see those 4s here, okay? And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.